Welcome to part two of getting started with the Intel Edison video series. I'm Sean with SparkFun Electronics. On the last episode, I showed you how to download Intel's version of the Arduino software, along with some drivers, which are gonna be needed for this episode. We also uploaded our first sketch to the Arduino Edison board, and we saw a blinking LED as a result. On this episode, I'm gonna show you how to update Linux running on the Edison, which is a really good thing to do when you first get your Edison out of the box. We are gonna be using a custom Linux image made from the Yocto project. This was a custom image built by Intel specifically for the Edison. The Yocto project is a working group within the Linux Foundation that was started in 2010. Yocto provides a set of software and tools in order to create customized Linux images or other pieces of software for embedded systems like our Edison here. The focus is on cross-compiling, meaning that you would create your Linux image or a piece of software on your computer and then move it over to the Edison in order to run it. Yocto merged with Open Embedded in 2011 in order to provide a common framework for creating embedded Linux images and software. For this tutorial, you're going to need an Edison, of course. You can also choose one of the expansion boards, such as the Arduino breakout board, the mini breakout board, or the SparkFun base block. In addition, you're gonna need two USB micro cables. Let's get started. Connect the Edison to the breakout board like we did in the first video. If you're using the Arduino breakout board, make sure you slide the switch to the micro USB connector side. Then connect both USB cables to both of the connectors on the breakout board, and then connect the USB cables to your computer. We need to download the latest Yocto image from Intel's site. So head to maker.intel.com, navigate to software and documentation, and download Edison Yocto Complete Image. If you're on Windows, you'll need to download some drivers for the FTDI chip located on the expansion board. Head to ftdichip.com, click on Drivers, and then click on VCP Drivers. Down at the bottom, you'll see a note that says, Available as Setup Executable. Click on Setup Executable to download that to Windows. Find and run the executable you just downloaded. Go through the pop-up windows to install the FTDI drivers. And then say yes to restart your machine when asked. If you're on Windows, you'll also need some sort of serial client. For this, we're gonna use PuTTY. Go to your search engine of choice and search for PuTTY. The first or one of the first that should show up is PuTTY and SSH Telnet client. Click on that, go to downloads, and click to download putty.exe. Note that if you're on Mac or Linux, the FTDI driver and console program should be built in, so you don't need to worry about those programs. Find the downloaded Yocto image files and extract the zip file. Copy all of the contents within the zip file and then go to the Edison drive. And this should be some sort of drive named Edison, which will be the same across all your operating systems. If there are any contents within the Edison drive, delete them all, and then paste in the Yocto image files. If you're in Windows, we'll need to figure out what the COM port number is for our Edison. Go to the Start button and search for Device Manager. When that opens up, drop down Ports. You'll see a COM number after USB serial port. Remember that, in this case, it's COM22. Next, go to your Downloads folder and run PuTTY. Select the Serial Radio button Enter your COM port number, so 22 in this case, and change the baud rate to 115,200. Click Open. That should open up a serial console port. Hit Enter a few times and you should see Edison's command prompt. If you're on a Mac, open up a terminal and type screen slash dev slash cu.usb serial, immediately hit tab so it auto completes, and then finish typing 115200 space dash L and hit enter. Hit enter a couple of times and you'll see the Edison login prompt. On the other hand, if you're in Linux, open up a terminal and type sudo screen slash dev slash tty capital USB zero space 115200 and hit enter. This will also give you a login prompt for the Edison. From here, the steps are the same with any operating system. We have a serial console into Linux on the Edison. With the command prompt, type root for the login and then press enter. Note that the Edison has a five second timeout with the console. If you have not typed something with the five seconds, your first keystroke will wake up the console, so you might end up with something missing its first key. If no character appears in the beginning, just erase it and type it again. Note that the update we're about to do will fix this issue. 
type reboot OTA and then hit enter. Be warned, this will erase everything on your Edison. Wait for a bit and you'll be presented with the login screen again. Once you see that, type root and press enter. Then type uname-r, press enter again to see the version and name of Linux we are running. I just showed you how to update Linux running on Edison using a custom Yocto image from Intel's site. If you were able to get through all of those steps, up to and including running the uname-r command without any errors, it means that the update happened correctly. This is something I definitely recommend doing before starting on any projects with the Edison. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at Linux running on the Edison, so stay tuned.